what's up you guys i'm drawing on my live stream uh how's life it's all right louis balmain um uh, how's life for you man Just trying to get sponsored by Skull Candy and Vans. That would be dope. Louis Ballman, what do you do? For anybody who's on my YouTube right now, I'm also live streaming on my uh, Instagram. So um, you'll hear me answering questions from my Instagram as well. didn't pin my post oh my goodness man Instagram you should be able to that's mad annoying not letting me pin my comment okay for everybody who just joined I'm drawing live on my YouTube um, and I'm doing a tribute for uh, Akita or Akira uh, and uh, yeah one of my favorite animes anime it's a movie that I saw that basically changed my life so that's cool um, what's going on Bamba jr. I can't believe it wouldn't let me pin my other comment maybe it didn't go through that's that's corny Mad corny. Thank you guys for all joining. Uh, when I get my merch, I'll sure need you. I'll sure need some stuff. All right. For anybody that's on my YouTube, um, let me know if you can actually hear my live stream, because um, sometimes I'm not sure if you guys can actually hear me. So just uh, yeah, write a comment, be like, yeah, I can hear you, bro. Uh, I'm working on getting a better, like a whole better mic and system and everything else like that, um, so you guys can actually hear me uh, on the stream. So. Because right now you can like hear my microphone and all, all the other shit on my mic, which is whack.
What's going on, Black Man? Um, I'm thinking about, uh, I guess, in this video, kind of talking about um, iconography. And what I mean by that is, you know, uh, things that we see that are icons um, that affect how we kind of draw things, right? So, for example, in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, most people will, um, when they draw, they draw using iconography. Um, they don't really draw kind of using the arm or using real reference. Um, so, for example, the best thing I can think of right now is an eye. Um, and if you go to my YouTube, you'll see, like, most people will draw an eye like this. And they'll just kind of draw an eye based off what they believe an eye should kind of look like opposed to how the light hits the eye opposed to how the light hits your drawing um and when you start thinking about your work outside of iconography you really start to um draw your characters you know with a light source in mind and what lines you need to kind of focus on where i'm at right now is when i'm drawing stuff I'm so used to drawing all the lines for all of the muscles and all of the anatomy. Um, I, for, I forget that some of those lines are not necessary. You know what I'm saying? Yo, um, Louis Balmain, you, uh, you don't have to qualify your sexuality on here, brother. You know, especially if you're just saying I'm an idol. I, one, I appreciate that. I really do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's okay to admire people of the same sex. Um, I admire uh, St. Chase and Mikhail Dingo and, um, you know, Nicholas Draper Ivy. These are artists that I constantly talk about that are really, really good. Um, and so I appreciate your support and everything else, man. You know, um, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, you know, you don't, you don't really got to qualify your uh, sexuality when, you know, respecting someone of the same sex and shit, uh, but I do appreciate it. One price? What's up, man? Yeah. Well, digital is, is allowing me to experiment a lot more and start to think about my work in, in a lot of different ways, you know what I mean? I need a shot of Akira, like a front shot of his jacket that he rocks. Perfect. Just found a perfect front shot, man. You would think I would have drawn um, Kaneda like fucking years ago um i don't know why it's taking me this long to draw kaneda uh, when so many of my passwords as a kid and so many of the things i you know I, uh, uh like passwords and shit like that have been kaneda or tetsuo in the past and uh how important this anime was to me and like i'm finally doing a drawing for it Probably because I didn't think I could do it justice. Don't always need the line, just color and shade. Yeah, in some cases, if that's your particular style, I agree. Uh, what you're hearing in the background, too, is one of my favorite movies. It's, um, it's called The Count of uh, Monte Cristo. And I fucking love it. Um... It's just a great movie, man. Another thing I have to be, be aware of is tangents. I do that a lot, like lines that look like they connect and they shouldn't. Ah, he burned the letter. Fucking love this movie, man. Now, if you're someone who enjoys, like, kind of strategy and 
that aspect of it in, in revenge movies. This is a perfect movie for you. Monsieur Clarion. Oh, I love this film. Everybody who's on my chat and you think I'm just sitting here so you guys can watch me smoke hookah, uh, I'm actually drawing on my YouTube live. So if you want to check out what I'm drawing, go to my YouTube, subscribe, and all that jazz. Also, follow me on Instagram. Um, set up post notifications. I haven't been posting as much as I want to, so my posts have not been coming out daily like they used to. And uh, just because I'm spending a lot more time um, doing practice and study and stuff like that. And so... I haven't really been showing a lot of that work um, that's been added. So, um, yeah, S uh, set up post notifications if you want to actually see what I'm drawing. I'm a priest and not a saint. Ah, I love that line. It's dope. What's good, Hero Kid? I'm just drawing a, a tribute to uh, Akira or Akira. I keep saying Akira, man. Um, at, on my YouTube live stream, if you want to see that, you should uh, go to my YouTube channel, man.
see some of the techniques I'm using to kind of draw a little bit. If you want to see what I'm drawing, go to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm just doing a tribute to uh, Akira. Uh, Kachiro Otomo's work from 88. The movie, sorry. The movie premiered in 88. Um, but the comic, I think, came out before then. Yeah, it was definitely running a lot of chapters before then. so crazy because the comic is such a large departure from um, the anime uh, or excuse me the anime is a large departure from the manga um, you know obviously they had to try to fit so much into a feature-length film but they changed a lot of stuff you know they never had Akira kind of live again they never had people kind of worshiping him um, Tetsuo didn't get like his full arc and uh, yeah, there was a lot of things that was, you know, that they couldn't add into the movie. I don't want to say that they missed, but it was just like conscious decisions of basically being like, we got to kind of leave this out, you know. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, for people who just joined the chat, uh, one of the things I kind of started talking about was iconography and, you know, um, drawing the, the actual aspects of the character and not you know what you deem is an icon of said character um, so what I mean by that is uh, you know just doing a regular oval eye because you know in your mind an eye is an oval or almond shape um, uh, really using a light source really understanding you know what lines need to be visible and shown um, because of that so I wanted to talk about avoiding iconography, avoiding um, it's just like kind of the outline shapes of it. Um, you know, you have to be very conscious of that. Um, and a, a, an example I use is an eye. A lot of people will just draw an almond shaped eye and like that's it, right? And they, you know, they'll do all the different lines on the eye when it's not necessary. Um, so really using a, a real lighting source to determine you know where you want to put lines and where you want to put contours and stuff like that and shade those things
probably going to end up skipping a lot of steps here. If you want to see what I'm drawing, go to my YouTube and check out what I'm drawing. Um, for all the people who are just got just got here, also um, set up post notifications too uh, if you want to just see when I'm drawing because I'm not posting regularly like I used to because I'm doing a lot more kind of study so um, work Yo, are you religious? Sorry for the random question. Uh, no, not really. Um, uh, I would say I'm more spiritual. Um, I grew up in a religious household, kind of. And uh, for a while when I was in um, foster care, the people I lived with, they were missionaries. And uh, so I did grow up with a lot of religion around me. Um, to a degree, and, uh, you know, I think religion is cool, I think some people abuse religion, um, in a lot of ways, and so, um, you know, instead of it helping, it, it causes a lot of problems, I was blessed enough that the people I live with, in my opinion, they use religion in the right way, um, or in a way that wasn't harmful to other people, but in a way that they use it to enrich other people's lives, and to me, uh, that was ended up being so much more important. Um, my problem with current religions is that, you know, certain people uh, or men um, in general, like humans, um, decide what is, you know, canonical or not or canon um, in a lot of religious texts. And so what ends up happening is you have these religious texts that are schizophrenic or... Um, you know, extremist in some nature, uh, you know, because I used to have to read the Bible on a regular basis and um, understand it, interpret it, and pray, and all that other stuff, um, I found I was asking myself a lot of questions after reading certain portions of the Bible um, that felt very schizophrenic, um, portions that, you know, relate to God, um, you know, and, and, and kind of a, as a human, and, and, you know, give him human traits and stuff like that, which was very weird. Um, you know, understanding that the flood and, you know, some of this, the decisions that God made uh, was out of, you know, jealousy of other deities and stuff like that. And, you know, his wrath and anger and, you know, how that is juxtaposed by God's eternal love and you know, everything else, and so, um, that was always a very weird experience, uh, for me, um, you know, religion, and, and kind of, you know, what it meant, and how people ultimately used it, um, I see a lot of, uh, hypocritical, um, aspects of, you know, certain forms of religion, and, uh, I can't really abide by that, you know, I can't really, I uh, abide by it, I can't really get behind it, to a degree. So, thanks for the question, though. I appreciate any questions that come through. I'll try to answer them uh, if I feel like they're kind of appropriate or whatever, or or if I feel like I just want to answer them or not. Um, so. so, if you want to know what I'm drawing, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube uh, make sure you don't miss any of uh, the artwork that I'm doing. Oh, yeah. And again, I appreciate the support, man. Everybody who's, you know, decided they want to come out for the chat and just kind of support what I'm doing and stuff. You know, I really appreciate you guys. I can't, you know, say that enough.
and it, what you hear in the background is one of my favorite movies. So um, it's The Count of Monte Cristo, and uh, oh, such a good movie. So well done. Acting is great. Um, I love the revenge story. I love like people who are strategists, people who, yes, Q, it is flavored. It's called Code 69. Um, I also picked up another flavor called Geisha, which actually smells pretty good. I can't wait to smoke that. Um, an odd experience where I had to overcome something. I mean, right now I'm kind of overcoming the idea of my style and, you know, the, you know, how I interpret the human experience, how I interpret, um, you know, uh, uh, human gesture and body and stuff like that. Um, one thing I can kind of give, one example I can give directly uh, was doing um, a lot of uh, anatomy work where I was drawing a lot of skeletons. And uh, that shit was fucking painful because I'm not very good at drawing skeletons. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it, it was extremely hard for me. Um, and I really, you know, um, to be perfectly candid, I fucking hated it in the beginning. Um, like my first day of doing it, you know, probably did like 20 different skeletons and it was extremely hard, um, to actually, uh, do. And, uh, after the first day I started to fall in love with it because I started getting better and I started having a better understanding. And then when I started adding muscles to those skeletons, I was like, holy shit, I'm getting so much better because I'm really understanding where the tendons of the muscles then connect, which then started to translate into the squash and squ squash and squish, ah, squash and stretch mechanics of muscles. And I was just like, it just boom, just started to hit me. Um, where do I go to practice skeletons? I, uh, I have a little app on my phone called a Skelly app. Um, it's a 3D rendering of a skeleton and you can move it around and pose it. And I was just moving it around in a bunch of different angles and perspectives and poses and I was just drawing um, this skeleton. And I was just trying to make, you know, once I started drawing the basic skeleton over and over and over again, I started to, um, I started to then start drawing it in different poses and I started to make it more difficult, more difficult. You know, I never wanted to feel like I was just getting a hang of the poses. I just kept going and going and making it harder and harder. And in making the poses harder, it was just making me understand the skeleton much better. Uh, Shadow Deep is a real place. Yeah, yeah, I know. It is a real place. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I thoroughly, uh, I thoroughly love this movie. Um, I've watched it easily, like 10 times. Um, I mean, that's easy, easily. When I just want to like put a movie on in the background and draw, I'll put on, uh, I'll either put on Ninja Turtles, um, The Count of Monte Cristo, or um, like one of my other old school favorites, like Seven Samurai or Yo Jimbo. Um, things that I kind of know the story of and I can check in periodically. Um, yeah, so um, have I read the book? I have not. And I, you know, I should do a lot more reading, but I feel like when I'm re I feel like when I'm watching a film, I can work simultaneously. Um, and so I do a lot more watching films uh, than I do, you know, reading books. And that's kind of, I feel guilty about that. Um, would I be open to sharing these skeleton sketches? I posted some of them to my Instagram a couple times, but I haven't done the skeleton study in a while. I might have to go back to it, or I will have to go back to it in order to get better and in order to understand um, certain poses and perspectives again. Uh, yeah, so you, you, you guys will get a chance to see the skeletons again. Um, but what I, what I will say is what you want to do is you want to draw skeletons on your own um, and start building up to that. I have listened to some audiobooks. Um, like I listened to the Sumerillion on audiobook. Um, 
that is a hard and dense book to kind of listen to, but I, I liked it because I like the lore of Lord of the Rings. Uh, and whenever I like to, you know, write and tell stories, I like to write and tell my stories like from the beginning of creation. So though I might not be that religious, um, I do love playing a lot with religion and theology. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to kind of write about or to um, kind of start, you know, like starting my world building um, uh, with the gods and that kind of, um, that world's belief structure. Um, in Rise to the Lord Osiru, the belief structure plays a direct uh, connection with the main character that I've written, which is Osiru. Um, he comes in contact uh, with those gods and their particular physical forms. Um, in uh, Duelist, you know, there's a play with uh, with um, duality and the religion there. Um, Daniel Elias says this looks great. Thank you, Danielle. I appreciate that um, on my uh, YouTube. And uh, yeah, so I, I like starting stories there and uh, listening to the Sumerian audio audio book was long, but um, I listened to it while I was at work and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, you know, and I also have a better understanding of Lord of the Rings now. It's like fucking awesome. Um, yeah, but that is my, one of my guilty, my sins, I feel like, is I do not read enough books. Um, partially because I'm dyslexic, too. It's a little bit of a pain in my ass uh, reading things several times and reading them a lot to get the full comprehension. And I know, I know, books are better. They're always, always generally better, but I think that's because you know, in a book, when you read a book, you can imagine a character um, however you want them to. And I feel like after I watched a movie, I just Im imagine that character in that in the book. Um, person with a weird name, you say, hey, yo, what's up? I appreciate you joining, man. Thank you. I feel you talking about the choices and the effects of those choices and my stories. Yeah, I mean, but also, too, like, even you know, in Iku the Keeper, a story that I'm actually writing and doing a more thorough set of world building, um, you know, theology does have a place in it, and it will play a, a part in the uh, hard magic structure that I've established, um, but, uh, um, you know, it's not in the forefront. It won't be completely prominent. But I think it helps with character motivations and stuff, you know, like why certain people and societies do the things they do and how they handle it, you know, based on the theological structure of that society. Also, Igu the Keeper takes place in, in Africa, uh, in, a, in, you know, a fictional land in Africa. And, um, and I want to use Yoruban lore and stuff like that to build out the world building there. And I also want to introduce the world to that on a mainstream scale. So you will see uh, religion added to that. Uh, Joda Martz, I don't know who Oliver Kobiel is. Can you explain? To me his work and what he kind of has done uh, on the chat and maybe I'll look him up I also I love Jacopo in this film too he's like I want revenge he's like okay I'll go I'll pop over there I'll slit his throat, and then I'll come back. So I go, we kill him, and then I come back. He's like, how is this a bad plan? You know what I'm saying? And I just love, oh, this, like, when you think about movies that have a plan and a strategy that I go through, 
Um, and, uh, and, uh, you know, you think of this film, man, it, I feel like it's the basis of a lot of those films. Um, damn, I love this guy. Uh, I sound intelligent. Yeah, I sound more intelligent than I am. So, um, that's, uh, yeah, that's the magic. That's the, um, wizard behind the curtains. Definitely. Um, situation. Yeah, there's so many scenes in this movie where it's like not meant to be funny, but it is, and uh, or they just or they just add humor to this film. That's great. Like the guy is about to buy the dude's house, and he's like, "Nigga, you want to buy my house?" He laughs at him, just gives him a, a fucking cart full of gold, and he's just like, "What the?" Fuck? You know what I'm saying? He's like, "What?" It's like, "Thank you." My man didn't even change his clothes. He just hopped in his wagon, probably left his wife and his kids, because that's how it was back in the day, and the nigga just drove off into the sunset with a shit ton of money. Oh, I apologize, he's down, uh, he's drawing the unworthy Thor and Amazing Spider-Man uh, in the Magic Order. I haven't seen the Magic Order, I want to see the Magic Order. Um, and, uh, and, uh, but I, I do like Unworthy Thor, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that's cool, um, I think that was a kind of a cool setup and everything else, um, I really like Jane Foster's Thor, I really like the, you know, I think, I feel like in main comics, um, you know, she had a real, uh, consequence to, um, you know, becoming Thor, every time she changed, she basically you know, fucked over all the chemo that was happening to her body, and she made that conscious decision every time to, um, you know, become Thor, and, uh, and, uh, save people's lives, man, and, and do the right thing, um, and so I, I really like that, I like the relationship between, um, Jane Foster and Thor Odinson, um, you know, because then they kind of go to this plutonic relationship, that you don't get a chance to really see in uh, a lot of media, and so I thought that that was, um, I thought that that was really great, um, but yeah, I didn't know that that was the guy's name who was the artist, and, you know, I should pay, pay more attention to artists on, for some of my western comics, a lot of times I don't, because I feel like a lot of, a lot of things look very similar and the same, so. Oh, Thor God Butcher, yeah, that was a, that was a crazy, um, series of, of, of comics, um, because then you have, like, Or, or whatever, what was his name, Or, no, his name was Gore, Gore the God Butcher, um, and, uh, that was very interesting, that was also a good character kind of arc for Thor Odin's son, Beta Ray Bill is underrated as fuck, yes he is, I think he was the first person to ever pick up Thor's hammer that wasn't Thor, uh, and then the the weapon that Thor has in the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe Storm uh, Breaker, was originally given to um, Beta Ray Bill, and uh, and uh, and then Beta Ray Bill basically goes off and he comes back periodically, but he's secretly like a Thor fan favorite, Beta Ray Bill. Um, yeah, and uh, he's super iconic. I thought it would have been really cool if they found some way to bring in Beta Ray Bill into the MCU somehow. Um, but, you know, they only have so much time, and there's only so much that they can actually do. Uh, I'm underrated AFG. No, I'm not underrated. I'm r right. I'm trash right where I am. <laughs> um, you know, you got to look at other artists, man, They're, who are like four million times better than me. Uh, great work, my dude. Way to set the bar. I hope I didn't set a bar. That would be sad um, for me in that instance, because you know I'm not a huge fan of of uh, my own work. So 
um, because of, you know, um, because of, uh, you know, the artists that are really putting in work out there and getting their projects done. When I look at them and I see, you know, the quality of their work, it, you know, definitely exposes my own skill. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Thanks, Q. I appreciate that. This is where on my YouTube where I need to basically compress all my layers and then just keep drawing on top of it because um, I'm wasting time having to jump between layers now and do all that bullshit. This is not a vape, a vape. It's actually a hookah it's connected to a smoking device. Um, I started smoking hookah when I joined my fraternity. Um, years ago and I, I stopped for a while and I uh, started smoking hookah again. I give myself stints where I'm not smoking and then where I am so. Yeah vapes are really harsh for me too. Um, it's probably because I haven't I don't have one I haven't used it frequently so. This nigga Satana is sleeping on the floor. He's in the most lavish mansion ever. And Dan's like, yo, I just feel more comfortable sleeping on a hard surface, nigga, because I was sleeping on a rock in Shadow D for 15 fucking years. Um, damn, I love this movie. I'm gonna compress the all these layers, compress, combine all the layers, and I'm actually gonna blow this picture up a little bit. See, I wish I added a little bit more emotional context to this drawing, but I'm gonna be honest. At 1 a.m. here, um, uh, I'm not going to. Um, I'm not gonna do that because it's. Um, I'm fucking tired. And uh, it would have been nice to start this drawing earlier this morning. I didn't know that. I, I didn't realize that today was the 20th anniversary of Akita. Uh, how do I get the smoke through my nose? I just blow it through my nose, man. I was in my prime and I was good, I was, uh, I'd be able to blow like 
three or four O's at the time. I do know a lot of this movie um, because I've watched this so often, but uh, I also, I'm watching the movie at this very moment, so when these scenes are coming up, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm remembering some of the scenes that are happening and stuff like that. Yeah, movie tickets cost me an arm and a leg here. Um, yeah. Yo, just the cinematography of this film is just phenomenal. You know, um, the music, the way they use silence, um, the way they go into the catacombs in France, um, which is, you know, insane because people have gone to the catacombs and just fucking died because they've gotten lost because of how deep they are. Um, such a crazy fucking movie, man. Such a really good movie. Um, should I start inking this? Even though I'm on my live. Maybe I'll do a little bit of ink in here, show what I'm ultimately doing. Um, for all the new people that have joined, I'm drawing on my YouTube Live. If you want to see what I'm drawing, you should go there and um, check that out. And I'd appreciate that. Maybe subscribe. Uh, if you don't already, set up post notifications here. That would be cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish I would have saw Black Panther a lot more. I just also realized the nigga who plays Superman is the kid in Count of Monte Cristo. I remember that, uh, like, maybe, I don't know, a couple times. Um, I can't remember if it's uh, Henry Cavell or whatever his name is, I think. Yeah. Um, back to what I was saying. I wish I'd saw Black Panther a lot more often. Man, I wish, I wish I had a better art style. But, uh, okay, I'll keep practicing to improve my skills and then develop the style that, you know, I really want. Man, and the Count's just swagger. Santana's swagger, and this is just so cold, man. I love this movie. influence my art style I mean there's a lot of people there's a lot of people and a lot of artists that influence it um currently right now it would be like LaShawn Thomas uh Saint Chase um uh Mikhail Dingo in a sense but a lot of animes that I watch you know will influence how I draw my individual characters one of the things that I try to do is I try to make sure um my characters don't look the same so I try to draw them very differently and pull from a lot of influences. Um, so then that way, you know, my characters kind of have a diverse look to them. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I don't even know how to say that. Thanks for the question, you.
Jacopo easily got to be one of my favorite characters in this. Can you watch my recent video? It's funny. Potentially. Um, what's your recent video about? I think Instagram's getting to that point where it's about to kick me off. Um, so if I go, thank you guys for, you know, joining the chat and uh, asking questions and stuff. I really appreciate it. A character named Teddy. Uh, no, this is actually a loft space, but um, yeah, it's my loft office actually. Right, I'm going to actually finish drawing this arm, and I think I'm going to call it. It's actually getting hot up here. And I like to draw um, uh, not in silence, I say, for the lack of a better term, but not having to pay attention to my live chats and my, um, and my devices uh, simultaneously. Some of my favorite anime series is uh, uh, Hunter x Hunter. Um, Naruto, um, Samurai Shampoo, Cowboy Bebop, uh, uh, Haikyuu, I really like Haikyuu a lot, um, I think it does, it has amazing music, has great character arcs and building, uh, and I normally don't watch sports animes, um, but Haikyuu is one of those ones that I really, really enjoy a lot. Hey, what's up, uh, Karu? Karu? Appreciate you joining the chat. If you want to see what I'm drawing, um, just go to my YouTube channel and you can see my live. I generally post my lives the next day, so anybody who wants to see what I talked about uh, in my previous lives and the most recent thing I've, I've drawn, I've started to draw, uh, you can just check out my YouTube subscribe, you know, help me build up my following base.
Martin, what's up, man? Thanks for joining. I can't believe Instagram is letting this chat go as long as it has. I've been taking drawing seriously for about four years now. Four years ago, after watching a uh, Psych for Yes in video, he said you should draw every day in order to get better. And I said, well, you know what? I'm going to fucking draw every day. And uh, I don't give a fuck what's happening or what I'm supposed to be doing. I make sure no matter what to get my art time in and to draw every day. Um, I think the next step is to establish a routine where I'm drawing, um, I'm doing study for a certain amount of time a day, and then I'm doing my own stuff, um, my own kind of like, you know, iterative growth drawing during that time. So if you want to get to where I am, as people have said to me, which is fucking mind blowing, um, then uh, draw every day for the next couple of years and you know, which in the grand scheme of things is not a lot of time. Um, yeah, so uh, draw every day for the next three to four years um, and then, you know, do it better than me. So, you know, actually establish a routine where you're studying, you know, drawing from life and you're studying your favorite artists and you're going to be better than me in no time. All right, my chat's closing. Thank you guys for joining. Appreciate it. Peace.
for everybody who's on my YouTube. Thank you guys for joining. I appreciate it. This is going to be my live stream. Um, sketching and inking uh, Kaneda from Akira. I appreciate you guys' support once again. Thank you so much. If you're new to my YouTube, please subscribe. I try to do at least two or three live streams a week. I'm going to try to start putting together more videos for you guys to watch. Thank you again.